Does this ever happen to you? It happens to me more often than I want to admit. You're playing along, fingers are going up and down, breath is going in and out, but I'm thinking about, you know, what I might have for lunch today, or how nice the sky was this morning, or how cute Robbie Dog is, and then something registers in my brain that I actually liked something that I just played. It may just be a melodic fragment, but, you know, I'd kind of like to play it again. But of course, by then, I can't remember what I played or how I played it. That's what we want to think about today. First off, let's not beat ourselves up too much. Uh, improvisation is a really important part of what we do with our flutes. And improvisation, by its nature, is here and then it's gone. I do some improvisation as part of every practice session, but I couldn't tell you what I played this morning or how I could play it again. In fact, I know some musicians who are so committed to improvisation that they're reluctant to record anything because it freezes the music. But what about those really special moments, those times when the universe shares some little bit of magic with us that we actually want to play again, that we want to remember? How do we go about doing that? This is going to sound pretty obvious, and I know it's easier said than done, but a really great starting place for trying to remember more of those special moments is simply to pay attention to what we're doing. It's so easy for our playing to go onto autopilot, fingers going up and down, breath coming in and out, but our mind and our spirit are someplace else entirely. It's kind of like when we're having a conversation with somebody and we're not really paying attention and then we realize they've asked us a question and we're going to have to ask them to repeat the question because we weren't really paying attention. I'm sure that never happens to you. Another benefit of being fully attentive in our playing is that we are more open, we're more connected, and we can actually have more of those special moments if it's all in place. Now, how to be more attentive in our playing is kind of a deep dive topic that we'll save for another time. What we want to do today is look at a very simple tool that can be very helpful. So let's say that I'm actually present enough in my playing and the universe shares a little magic with me. It's a nice phrase. I'd like to hear it again. So I play it again. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it still feels good. And I play it a third time. Wow, this is, yeah, this, this wants to stick. I'm really enjoying this. I really want to remember this. That's when I grab my phone and hit record on my memo app. On iPhone, when I pop open the memo app, it's ready to record. Hit the red button and I'm recording. Hit it again and it stops. If I back out to the all recordings window, you can see that there are currently more than 220 memos recorded. And I clear this thing out pretty regularly. The vast majority of these are from me hitting the record button in the middle of practicing or jamming to make sure I have a way of remembering something. There are lots of individual phrases or tune fragments. Sometimes there are several versions of those fragments. Sometimes there will be a dry run of a whole song or a recording of a full improv when things were really feeling good. There are a few live performance recordings, also a few recordings of friends or colleagues playing, some duets with Robbie Dog, of course, even some soundscape recordings when the frogs were in good voice. But mostly it's little fragments of things that I want to get down quickly before I forget them. Sketches, really. The app always dates the recording and tells you how long it is, and then I give it a useful title. I mark down which flute I was playing by maker and key and give it a little description. So here on September 16th, 2022, Robbie Dog and I did a short jam together, and I was playing a Colin Peterson flute in A. This track actually became a short YouTube video. I'll put a link in the description box if you want to hear Robbie do his thing. If you are finding this helpful and enjoyable, please do hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really does help. You can also visit me at my website, ronwarrenmusic.com. There's a lot of free streaming music there and information about online lessons and workshops and stuff like that. Uh, you can also visit me at Insight Timer if you're interested in deep listening music and extended meditation kinds of tracks. I'll put links in the description box. I'm actually getting close to 500 subscribers, which is amazing to me. So many, many thanks to all of you that have jumped on board. 
Now, your memo app can be useful in many ways. When I was working on my Lunacy Agua pieces, I had just moved to where I'm living now, and I was spending a lot of time outside connecting with the new place and with all the beings that were going to be sharing the place with me. Then I would come back into the studio and improvise reactions on my flute, and if something felt good, I would hit that record button on my memo app and get it down. Now, very little of that actually made it into the pieces, but it's really nice to kind of have an audio log of all of that activity, have a bunch of flute material there, and some frogs. You really got to hear these guys. Here's the day last October when a nice heartbeat song fell out of a Colin Peterson flute in G. It was so promising that I did another version right away and then tweaked it a little bit more and did two more push-ups and you see the note there, this is working. Then yet another version, four push-ups this time, this is really working. Now I haven't recorded this tune for real yet, but it's a keeper and it just showed up unexpectedly during an improv last October. My memo app helped me not just to remember it, but work through it and polish it a bit. Here are a few other features on my iPhone memo app that can be useful. Your memo app probably has some similar things on it. If I touch the little icon in the lower left of the window, it's trying to look like a mixer, I'm given a few options for making simple changes to the recording. I can speed up or slow down the playback. You can easily hear what your lick might sound like a bit faster or slower. Skip over the silences will do just that. Be careful with this. It will tend to skip ahead every time you take a breath. Enhanced recording basically puts a filter on the track to remove noise that isn't part of the main signal. You can really hear the difference. Here's an original recording. And now with the enhance switched on. It sounds like there might be a little bit of simple compressor limiter action going on there too. If I wanted to do this kind of thing for real, I would of course get the track into GarageBand or some other DAW, but this is fine if you just want to clean things up a little bit. If I go to the drop down button in the upper right, I'm given some familiar tools. Let's look at just a couple of them. The edit recording feature will take you to a window that shows the waveform of the recording and will allow you to punch in a replacement if you don't like something. I don't use this really because I just use memos as a sketch pad, but it's there if you want to try it out. The share feature will allow you to drop the audio file into other devices easily. So if you have something you want to use in GarageBand on your computer, it's very simple. Airdrop the file onto your computer, then simply drag the file into your GarageBand project. If you're on another OS, I'm sure you can do something similar or find a workaround. I really love it that most of what I play is only here for a moment and then goes spinning off into the air and is gone. So I only try to record those special bits that keep coming back around, that seem to want to stick, that maybe want to become something else. And that's why I always keep my phone app handy, just in case. Now I also have some quick ways of writing things down when I need to, but that's often more challenging for people who are just starting out. But if notation for your flute music is something you're interested in exploring, let me know in the comments section and we'll put that into the pipeline. In the meantime, be fully present and attentive in your playing. Keep that memo app handy. Have fun. I'll see you next time.